filhos do Belgio. Have you been tempted to think or to say this has been the worst year ever? Through good times and definitely the bad times, we know that God is living it with us all of the time. Our order of service has been modified to be more of a devotional mid mindset this year. We will begin with our first hymn, The Advent of Our King. Invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Our first prayer. Dearest God, your word tells us so much about you and how holy and perfect and good you are. You are worthy of our praise and worship as you have provided a savior for us. Bless our meditation on your word. Help us to believe that what you say. Help us to anticipate your coming with joy and gladness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our text for this evening is from Luke chapter two, verses one through seven. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinus was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, 
because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. This is the word of the Lord. Now we're going to hear from Jodine Stolt with a song. Wow, that was really good. Very good. Very good. First, I'd like to thank Trinity Lutheran Church in Fremont. There, they sent us energy for these. I think I made a mistake because the the text that we read is next week, and I'll go over the text for tonight. So I probably when I sent that to Joyce. Have you have you been tempted to say this ever? Or this is the worst Thanksgiving ever, or this is going to be the worst Christmas ever. We have a lot of questions going on. Uh, I'm waiting, wondering, uh, for Christmas, are we going to be able to have a fat family gathering? And if we do, are people going to feel comfortable coming, whoever they might be? Well, good news is, Advent means the coming. And we are awaiting the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the next three weeks, let's consider that this Christmas is actually not going to be the worst Christmas ever. Tonight's title uh, for this message is The Last to be Chosen are the First to be Called. See, Jesus wasn't born into a wealthy family. He wasn't born into a family that had connections. <clears throat> At best, it was awkward. His earthly parents were a teenage girl and a lower to middle class fiance. Um, so if your situation or our situation isn't ideal, there's good news because, because God makes a habit of using less than the ideal for his purpose. Several years ago, we, will, we were serving a medical missionary trip in Guatemala. And I should say, my son, my daughter, and my wife were serving that medical missionary trip, and I was digging a trench outside because uh, I'm not a medical person. Uh, <clears throat> we were serving alongside uh, Dr. Elry, and he served the squatters in about, oh, it was about 40 miles from Guatemala City in a town called Amontalan. And we were serving squatters there, and squatters live on two to $500 a year. And one afternoon, we took a tour through their house. And they were cardboard and tin. Some of them had one light bulb that they hung a, a electrical cord from the power line over to their cardboard house. And when we got back, a young lady who was with us from another group made a comment. She says, wow, I cannot believe how blessed I am. And Dr. Elry says something that will forever be with me. Tonight's text is actually from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. Up with this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Only two angels are mentioned in scripture, Michael and Gabriel. Gabriel means God is great, and he was a messenger for God. He actually sent three messages, one to Daniel, one to Zechariah, and now to Mary. And isn't it strange that he went to Nazareth to a group of Gentiles, and he passed over Imperial Rome or Jerusalem or the Temple Mount, to this tiny village in Galilee in the darkest days of human history God always has a plan and people to accomplish his purpose there is no and today is no exception verse 28 says the angel went to her and said greetings you are highly favored uh, the Lord is with you the true sense of this is, you are full of grace, which you receive by God. You are blessed among all women. It is free, is divine, and it's unmerited gift from God. It's unearned, it's undeserved. God chose her. She is the recipient of grace. She's not a dispenser of grace. Only God can dispense grace on us, sinners. Verse 29. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. Now, this is really good. She's young, she's engaged. I'm sure she's hoping to have a family. Jesus was a common name. It's, it, it derived from Joshua. But Gabriel says, there's more. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, 
and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angels, angel, since I am a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Young Mary's head had to just be reeling. Because the thought process was probably um, perceived as adulterer and being stoned. To be ridiculed, to catch the sarcasm from all the other Nazarene women of what she would have to endure. I wonder if, if, if she asked Gabriel, hey, would you like to stay for supper and meet my fiance? Or when Joseph got home, did the conversation start with, hey, Joe, guess who stopped by today? Verse 36 says, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. There's a big difference in how Mary responded and Zechariah responded. Zechariah, the great high priest in his robe, influential in Jerusalem, doubted and asked for a sign. Mary stated a simple fact. How can this be? I'm a virgin. She didn't ask for proof. She simply wondered. Verse 38 says, Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left. And that is faith. That is faith of the Holy Spirit given by God. And Mary said, that is probably another miracle of this Christmas story that we don't have to fight. And be rest assured. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. About 117 years ago, this Sunday, December 6, 1903, Orville and Wilbur Wright got their flying machine off the ground in a small town about eight miles outside of Dayton, Ohio. So excited, they sent a telegraph to their sister Catherine. And on the telegraph, it said, we've flown for 120 feet, we'll be home for uh, Catherine was so excited she went into Dayton to the newspaper and showed them the telegraph and the editor looked at the, at the telegraph so what's the application for us today today's title the last to be chosen or the first Stories that uh, legends and movies and fairy tales are made of. Like that little scrawny teenager who gets bit by a spider and becomes Spider Man. <laughs> or the baby is flown from Krypton to Earth and becomes the invincible Superman. But more importantly, the least likely are used for the most important also describes the true biblical power of God's work and he works through unexpected places and circumstances and people. In our scripture reading today we see that God uses the most unlikely places, the most unlikely plan and the most unlikely people to accomplish his purpose and his will. They say that ordinary people sometimes do extraordinary things and this is true of scripture as well. He uses everyday run-of-the-mill people, just like you and me, to accomplish his purpose that will return, give glory to him. So the next time you're feeling God can't use you, remember, 
some people from Scripture. Abraham was too old. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Joseph was abused. Moses was a stutterer. Gideon was afraid. Rahab a prostitute. David was an adulterer. Elijah was suicidal. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. A little boy with a lunch fed 5,000 people. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while he was praying. Matthew was a tax collector. Martha was a worry wart. A Samaritan woman was divorced several times. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul persecuted Christians. Timothy had an ulcer. And, well, Lazarus, he was dead. One thing that gives us hope, or should give us hope, is to see the people God used in Scripture. Because if I was God, I wouldn't have used half of these people. It seemed they had too many issues, too much drama going on in their life. But Scripture does not hide from us the fears, the failures, the dysfunction of the biblical characters. As we learn about these overcomers, we should be emboldened with strength to shake off our unworthiness, our insecurities, our passivity to make a difference in God's kingdom. And not to buy into Satan's lies. Satan's lies of God only uses perfect people. For the biblical heroes didn't have any weaknesses or circumstances to overcome. Where it's important to pretend I'm perfect in front of others, especially in church. Or one of Satan's biggest lies. God is angry with me for not being a better Christian. When people cry out to God, be it global, national, local, God's answer is always in a person. And normally, that person does not feel they are equipped to deliver. They don't have the confidence in themselves. But God has a habit in believing in us more than we believe in ourselves. While many of us in here may not fit that um, economic poverty picture, let's be clear that emotional, social and spiritual poverty don't keep us from doing God's will either. It doesn't disqualify us by being used by God. And all that, regardless, can change today. The last to be chosen are the first to be called. You are important. With God, you can make a difference today with your spouse, with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers. Our gospel lesson reveals that the least likely person that God would include in his plan to save you and me was a humble servant girl. She was poor, simple, unsophisticated teenager. But she found favor with God and was approved by him to do his will. Mary shut her eyes to the world and to common sense. Trusted him to bring all these things to pass. By faith she said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. As unlikely as it may seem, God has chosen you and he's chosen me and the ministries of St. Paul Lutheran Church for his holy purpose today. Like Mary, we recognize our unworthiness, but we are open to the Spirit's work in our lives and our hearts, and we submit to his good 
desire and his will. West Point may seem like the least likely place. And we the least likely people. But God will have his way. And he will accomplish his plan. What is his plan for you? What is his plan for me? Be assured that God is going to lead St. Paul through this difficult time in the weeks and months and years to come. There has never been better good news proclaimed by the angel Gabriel to Mary that day. The world was a tail spinning out of control in sin and people really hadn't heard from God in quite a long time. And if out of nowhere an angel appears to a teenage girl from a lowly family in a nowhere place and announces the greatest news humans have ever heard. When the rubber meets the road, are there times in our lives when we fully don't understand what God is doing? What should our response be? Are you carrying a burden that seems insurmountable? Is there a concern you have that there's no relief, relief for and no answers? God's word to his people. Nothing is impossible with God. God has spoken to sinful human beings and his message is simply Jesus our Savior. When that young lady said, I can't believe how blessed I am. Dr. Elry said, he had a little bit, he says, you Americans. He says, you think God's love and blessings are reflected in wealth. He says, God has blessed these people and loves them as much as he loves you. And then he says, how are you blessing God? That Dayton Ohio editor read that telegraph and said, huh, the boys will be home for Christmas. He missed it. He missed the biggest news. Later in an interview with him, someone asked, how did you miss the most monumental story of the year? And I quote his reply, well, if I'm being real truthful, we were just dumb. Will we miss Jesus because we're so busy? Concentrating on less important things or because we're just too dumb. May God graciously guide us through these exciting days and gives us eyes to see and ears to hear his calling. Faith and courage to accept the challenges which he sets before us. The strength to carry out his plans, work through us, and then his perfect peace as we, like Mary, say, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, be with the families and friends of Pat Alice, Phyllis Kramer, mother of Sonia Howell, Michael Reimers, son of James Reimers, and brother of Joshua, Joshua Reimers, and Jean Schilling, mother of Pastor Schilling. Deal graciously with all those who mourn, casting every care on, care on you. They may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Generous God, what were you thinking when you sent Jesus in our flesh? 
Why would you subject Mary and Joseph to to ridicule? Couldn't there have been a better place for a birth to happen? Wasn't there a different way? Wasn't there a better way? When we think of this story, this most amazing story, we realize that we understand so little about your immense love and care for your creation. The creation that bears your image. The creation, many of whom will ridicule and reject, and yet you send your son for them and for us. As we think of your love for us and your plan for us and your forgiveness for us and the eternal home you promise us, then there is no way that this can be the worst Christmas ever. Help us to remember that. Enable us to be to worship you with sincere hearts. Strengthen our resolve to live each day with you and at the center of our lives. May your holy and precious name be praised among us as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is on heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The reminder offering uh, can be placed in the offering plate at the back of the church as you leave. This is the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you your peace. Amen, amen and amen. Please be seated as we sing our last song.